We're here at Pokemon Stadium bringing you coverage of this latest installment of the Tea Cup. Our normal announcer Ted Lewis is home six, and we'll be bringing you the announcing from the press box. Now, as you can see, we have rules here so the bad Pokemon get their chance to shine in this cup. Yes, they are bad. Don't have to hide it. Today we'll be putting the spotlight on a team that calls itself Team Jiggly. Has Machop 80 attack and Jigglypuff 136 HP. You are not going to top those anywhere in this cup. Also brings Ghastly, Coughing, Psyduck. And look at that Magnemite. It says it's electric slash fire. It's not really fire. It just has to say that because it saved its data on a future version where Magnemite was electric steel and steel has that type number 9 which doesn't correspond to any type in this game so it has to keep looking down the list and sees an actual type to display the graphic for at 20, that's fire, so... The type 9 is meaningless, but it shows up as a strange oddity here. We're about to get underway in the Petite Cup. Battle 1 of Team Jiggly will be against the Bug Boy. Not sure how much of a challenge it poses, but we might see it. how this team actually works. And it'll be coughing for Team Jiggly. Leading off again... Paris. Looks like a big mismatch here. You can see Sludge Haze both in pink. Coughing can get those moves, but our computer doesn't think it can get them at such a low level. Of course, you can bring it in at level 5 from the future. And you can learn all of its moves as an egg. And there's a Sludge that... Massive overkill on Paris. Probably hits for at least 300% damage, but 100% is all that counts. Coughing gets the early lead. Up next, Bellsprout. Sludge would only hit for normal damage against that. Thunderbolt obviously hits for half, so might as well go for the Sludge. What'll it do? 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, and oh, zero, one shot on neutral time! Don't normally think of Sludge as a high-powered attack, it's only 65, but it's the most powerful poison we've got so far, and Coughing shows how to use it well enough. Here comes Weedle. Well, if Bellsprout went down from 60, Weedle, worst stats, 55 HP. Yep, here comes another Sludge! Will it work? Critical, so it should work. 20, 10, 0. Just like that, Coughing goes 3 up, 3 down in battle 1. 3 turn win. No damage, only one Pokemon needed. One battle down, 7 to go. Up next, draws Lad for Battle 2. I'd like to note that it's actually pronounced the Petit Cup, not the Petite Cup, as Ted Lewis used to do. But since he's home, might as well point you out to that correction. There's no E at the end, so you don't pronounce last T. But Chop will lead off against this team of three normals, three poisons. Make of that as you will. Faces Radita. Again, meditate, that's pink. Doesn't think it can learn it yet, but obviously it can in the future. In the future more recent than what our computer knows of. Here's Submission hits for one hit. And since it is one shot kill, Machop does not take recoil from it. Not sure if that matters, it has plenty of HP to spare, and here comes Ekans. Machop is just a power hitter. Here, yep, it has the Earthquake! It hits 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, and 0! Well, coughing swept in 3 turns, can Machop do the same here in Battle 2? Face is a ditto! There will be a massive HP disparity after Machop gets its hit in. If Ditto survives, it can transform, but I don't think that'll be good enough for much. Can Machop end it with one Earthquake? Critical hit! 40, 30, 20, 10, and 0! So it does! And just like that, two battles already done. A combined total of six turns. Battle 
three. Nerd with a highly explosive team. Go for the ghastly gambit, possibly bait someone into using explosion and switch to ghastly, but he's leading off with ghastly, so so much for that, he's not going to even invite an explosion. Coughing shows up. King Jiggly's coughing. Level 25, this coughing 30. But Ghastly gets the jump on it with a psychic. How much will that do? It, it's 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Oh, zero. One shot kill from five levels down. I'd just like to note, this is the same guy who took on the Prime Cup from 45 and 50 levels down. Scored eight perfects with that. Of course, they didn't have the advantage of using great Pokemon on bad Pokemon, and we see it there, but there's not really much choice what's good in this cup. Here comes Casting with a Thunderbolt. Shelter not really known for its HP or special, and goes down. Casting doesn't care about the defense at all. Shelter probably could have survived if something hit its defense, but it didn't. And here's Geodude. Geodude has the potential to get big damage, if it ever gets a chance. Psychic, will that do it? It hits 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 0! The coughing went 3 for 3, Machop went 3 for 3, and now Ghastly gets its sweep. Three turns. Three battles done. Comes Battle 4, Sailor. Five. Five Pokemon weak to a Thunderbolt. I wonder what that's gonna mean. Got some Thunderbolt. Sends out Magnemite for the extra height bonus with it. As if it's going to matter against Krabby. As you can see, Magnet Knight is a one-trick pony, or at least a one-trick agglomeration of scrap metal. That seems like a pretty potent trick here. High special. And there's a Thunderbolt easily takes down Krabby. Here comes Gold Bean. Ooh, I'm surprised Magnemite gets the jump here, not really known for its speed. Thunderbolt will take down Goldeen easily. That's 11 straight kills in 11 straight turns for this team. And Horsey. Magnemite strikes first here, too! Will the madness ever stop? We're halfway through the cup and none of Team Jiggly's opponents have ever gotten a turn to attack yet! This is just madness! with the junior trainer. This seems like a pretty diverse squad, at least on paper. Team Jiggly leading with its namesake this time. Jigglypuff will fight against Poliwag. Jigglypuff, I'm not sure if it has the sheer brute force needed to extend the streak of one-shot kills. Ooh, Hypnosis, Poliwag finally becomes the first opponent to get an attack in, and Jigglypuff falls asleep. Looks like that's not gonna fare well for the three-turn kill.
Polywag with a body slam. Hits Jigglypuff for 16. Ooh, bonus points for somnambulating into a perfect somersault. Mm, no, we don't allow those bonus points. Jigglypuff's still asleep. Another body slam. Hits for 17. And Jigglypuff wakes up. So it doesn't seem like Jigglypuff would be a heavy hitter, but she's showing she can play the long game. Polywag trying to get in another hypnosis. Missed. Of course, hypnosis not really known for its accuracy. Jigglypuff retaliating with Psychic 50, 40, 30, 29. So that's over 50%. Another attack by Jigglypuff, and Polywag's pretty much out. Gonna try a hypnosis number three. This time it still hits. with a body slam critical for 31 and Jigglypuff still above 50% wakes up after just one turn here comes a bubble beam it hits 17 just like the body slams were on average here comes a psychic that should do it 20-10-0 Rowlith goes first and did so. Jigglypuff was planning to hit with something, that's not gonna mean anything. Psychic, a definite mess. Basically, Growlithe goes first, then Jigglypuff has to rest off. Jigglypuff goes first this time! I guess that means the Jigglypuff and the Growlithe have to have identical speeds. It also means that Growlithe gets to put its damage in after Jigglypuff recovers, so she's on 111 instead of 136. And Growlithe goes first again, and digs! Jigglypuff obviously still asleep, and this next turn pretty much forced. Groundless digs a hole, Jigglypuff wakes up. So on the turns, Groundless goes underground, it goes first. On the turns, on the turns it goes back up, Jigglypuff goes first. If that keeps up, Groundless could pretty much dodge all of Jigglypuff's attacks by virtue of never being vulnerable. And there it is again, Groundless digging before Jigglypuff can get initiative. A Thunder Wave that'll miss. And again! Jigglypuff Thunder waving obvious miss since she went first! And Crown digging. Critical hit to 35! So we have seen one rather resilient puff here. Jigglypuff finally gets a chance to attack with Thunder Wave! That means this initiative war is no longer going to be a factor. Jigglypuff will go first from here on out. And there's a rest for over 100 HP recovered. You don't see that too often in this low-level cup. It tends to be more offense-oriented. <clears throat> there's a takedown from Growlithe. Backfires for six. Now we use a dig. <clears throat> now with Jigglypuff going first, Next turn. Won't matter since it's the turn she wakes up! So remember, sleep duration of rest is fixed at two turns. It is not variable like sleep inflicted by hypnosis or something. Oh, it got paralyzed there underground! Well, for playing outside of the stadium, you can use a loophole there and... You're considered permanently underground, no attack will ever hit you except Swift from there on out. But in Stadium, we fixed that loophole. Now Jigglypuff makes Growlithe pay with a double edge, which was lethal, and in comes Meowth. 
Meowth does go first for the Thunderbolt. And again, it hits for 17. Jigglypuff can take a whole bunch of 17s before going down, but doesn't need to. One double edge ends this match. So that's 15 and 0 for Team Jiggly. This one took a lot longer than the rest, but Jigglypuff proving this team can play the long haul instead, as well as the short haul. Just received word that the commander behind Team Jiggly has promised a Psyduck sweep in this sixth battle. That'll be six battles swept by six different Pokémon. A true test of versatility indeed. And just as we thought, Psyduck's coming out first. And against Magnemite, so you might want to take back that guarantee. This does not look good for Psyduck. Oh, it's poised to attack! What can it do against Magnemite? Not gonna hit for very much. Going with the Amnesia! Strange decision there. Goes to plus two special. That'll effectively wipe out the type advantage of Magnemite's Thunderbolt. And it hits down to 39, so one more Thunderbolt should be lethal for Magnemite. Psyduck's going to attack with Surf, pretty much has to end this in one shot or it goes down to a return Thunderbolt. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 4! Magnemite survives at 4 it'll... No, it won't! Sonic Boom, that's not gonna hit for enough damage! Psyduck's still at 19! I don't know why it used Sonic Boom there, it had the easy kill with Thunderbolt. Now Psyduck looks poised to end this run-in, but it's on 19 HP. Pretty much has to rely on offense from here on out. It would have needed 21 to put up a substitute, so it can't rely on that. And you can't really take very many hits at 19. Anyway, Magnemite goes down after that incredibly stupid move on its behalf. You already had the Thunderbolt for 50%. Why not use it again? Instead of using Sonic Boom to only hit for 20 of the remaining 39 you need it. Here's Psyduck with a nice beam on Farfetch'd with the Amnesia. That should be lethal. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, and 0 it is. What do we see as the 18th enemy faced by this team? Squirtle! Now this Squirtle has Seismic Toss. Use that and that'll end the streak immediately if it ever gets a chance. Might just want to end this guarantee and just keep the perf. No, it's not! Psyduck's going for Ice Beam! Critical hit, but still only hits for 26! Doesn't use Seismic Toss here, he uses Bite! Eight! So Psyduck survives, but for how much longer? Even a critical Ice Beam isn't going to be enough! It's staying in and using Ice Beam again! Oh, and it gets the freeze! Crucial freeze there! Could not survive another attack, but it doesn't have to. Squirtle now frozen at 16. And here comes a Surf. That should finish this. Some incredibly close run-ins for Team Jiggly. But again, it... Wins the day, so six Pokemon have swept the first six battles, each one in a different battle. And now Team Jiggly 18 and 0 with two battles to go. Really? I don't know why there were those mistakes. Thunderbolt with a chance to end it, and then Seismic Pause with a chance to end it later on. And then Psyduck getting that freeze, it absolutely had to, or it would have died to any attack. I don't know what it's going to do in Battle 7. We've already seen six Pokémon. Looks like Magnemite will lead off for the seventh battle against a Pikachu. Neither of these Pokémon look able to do very much to each other in the Electric Mirror. 
Well, we'll see what happens. Pikachu leads off with a Thunder Wave. Well, at least Magnemite can erase that Thunder Wave with rest if it needs to. It returns with a Thunder Wave, so they're both paralyzed. Back to an even playing field. Well, at least if you consider any match on Team Jiggly to be even. Pikachu can't get around its paralysis on the first turn of it. In Magnemite Thunderbolt, it does. And it hits for 31. That's half of Pikachu's HP with one not very effective Thunderbolt from Magnemite. Now oh, Pikachu trying to double team up. That's a one-third shot of missing. And one-third, it works. Magnemite missed. Now Pikachu fully paralyzed again. Magnemite Thunderbolt. Again it missed. Might Pikachu be able to... <coughs> it has a Thunderbolt which isn't going to hit for as much as Magnemite will, surely. And it also has a quick attack. Not sure what that's going to do either. But it has to get a boatload of attacks in before Magnemite can hit it again. Maybe Double Team will be the key. Now it's up to three, so attacks have a 60% chance of missing. Here's Thunderbolt. 60% and it does miss. Pikachu fully paralyzed. Doesn't get a chance to go up to four. Here's Thunderbolt. This time it hits critical, so that's going to wipe out Pikachu 19 straight for Team Jiggly. Magnemite becomes the first member of the team to get four kills. Rather even distribution at this point. Here comes Eevee. Oh, and it looks like the team is poised to switch. Looks like we'll see Machop in the Battle of the 30s. Eevee does get a free hit on Machop, and it will be Double Edge. Strikes for 29, and Eevee takes 7 recoil. Eevee trying to use Quick Attack, that may be the last attack it ever gets off here. <laughs> Machop with Submission, if that hits, it's over. And it does hit 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, and 0 again. No recoil on Machop since it got the kill. And here comes Clefairy. Gonna see another switch. Is he gonna have each Pokemon get one kill in these last two battles to tie it at four each again? Here comes coughing. And Clefairy with a body slam. The coughing's defense, that hits for 15. Coughing with sludge. That hits for a lot more than 15. Hits for 35. A Clefairy Body Slam. Paralyzed! So Clefairy is giving itself a free turn now. Clefairy probably going for Minimize. Clefairy pretty much needs three or four hits to take down Coughing. Coughing needs two. It's fully paralyzed. Sludge and Thunderbolt each hit about equivalent from coughing. Given this tight bonus. The body slammed a 33. Coughing Thunderbolt. <clears throat> Is it going for the paralyze? It gets it! So now coughing goes first again, only needing 15 damage. Either attack should work here. Could also use explosion, but that would ruin the perfect. 
And another Thunderbolt. If that hits, there's Minimize one up, but it goes through the Minimize, and Clefairy goes down. That's 21 after seven battles. Team Jiggly, 21, opponents, zero. a long time to decide who to send out, possibly a matter of who goes first in this battle. Who do you send out on this team? It'll be Ghastly leading off the final battle against Ritteran Female. Well, that's a mismatch. Not something you expect to see in a high-profile final battle like this. And Ritteran looks like it's gonna switch. Here comes Dratini. She gets a Psychic. Special down to 44. Now this Dratini can do bad things. It can paralyze you, possibly freeze you, go for Dragon Rage and the big damage. But after a Psychic hit for 33 and a special down, does it have a shot at dealing 44? Does have a pretty good one. Is that what Ghastly's gonna do? Yes! Will it get this key kill? 40, 30, 20, 10, and 0, it does! So that's now 22 opponents down without losing a single one of their own, though there was that close call two battles back. Sandshrew. Sandshrew can hit for big damage with Earthquake. But if the last battle was any indication, yep, Ghastly is switching out. In comes Psyduck, it'll have to survive this free hit from Sandshrew, which it does use Earthquake. 70, 60, 50, 45! Well, that's less than 50%. Psyduck can take another Earthquake if it needs to, if it doesn't get this kill with Surf, which it probably will. 40, 30, 20, 10, and there is only one opponent to go left in this cup. We know it's Nidoran female since it switched out earlier. And there it is. And it'll be on the namesake once again, Jigglypuff, to get the final kill for Team Jiggly in this Petite Cup. Her in with a takedown. It's for 19, so it'll take four recoil. Jigglypuff can basically end this one with Psychic. It won't, it uses double edge. 60, 50, 40, 30, 28. Nidoran survives with eight. But if it keeps using takedown like this, it could suicide. Would it be considered a kill by Jigglypuff if Nidoran kills itself with takedown recoil even after most, the large majority of the damage was dealt by the double edge? Jigglypuff basically rubbing it in at this point with a thunder wave, saying, I'm gonna make you helpless. Nidoran saying, I want out and I'll kill myself with takedown if I have to. Again, gets recoiled down to four. And will this be the battle? Will this be the turn that secures the final battle for this team that seemed destined to win? The four straight sweeps emerging from the jaws of defeat two battles back and there it is. Psychic ends the match and Team Jiggly 24 and 0. Each Pokemon with four kills. What a conclusion to this cup and what a dominating performance by Team Jiggly. Eight wins, eight perfects, 24 kills. And now we just sit back and enjoy the award ceremony.